On behalf of my wife Ruth, myself, my son Sean and his wife Carrie, and their sons Dale, Scott's godson, and Cole, I would like to acknowledge the immense support of all our city groups and individuals, too numerous to mention, but especially to our assisting officers Captain Lance Knox and Padre Matt Party. Scott always fulfilled his commitments, no matter what they were. He excelled in all his endeavors, both personal and military. He, we are extremely proud of Scott. Our hearts are full of happiness and joy he gave us. Scott preferred donations to be sent to the soldiers on fund. If you wish to donate, the Hearts of Funeral Home will happily provide with you with all the help you need by just going and mention it, mention it to them your intentions. To our local military support group, Scott was astounded by their support and encourages local groups and individuals to support their Red Friday Golf Tournament held on August the 14th. Scott will be truly missed by his family, his fiance Marcy, and of course his daughter Olivia. In God's peace, we leave you, Scott. Keep us in your comfort. We love you, son. The first time I met Scott, I was playing at his neighbor Chris Vincentini's house. Scott and Sean asked if we would like to play a little two-on-two -two basketball. We were maybe 10, 11 years old, not really sure. I'm pretty sure, well, I know Scott was completely, or was, was extremely competitive even then, and I'm pretty sure he was riding Sean the whole game to pick up the pace. I don't remember who won the game that day. I'm going to guess it was I that won, because I laughed with a new friend named Scott. By the time we were in late high school, Scott, my sister, and I were very close. We all worked at McDonald's together. In our days there, Scott will always be best known for three things. First, Scott would only wear pants that were one size too small to accentuate his assets. <laughs> Second, he established himself as the great nugget caper. And finally, the McGrimmis Cup collision. For those that don't know, the McGrimmis Cup is a street hockey tournament that was held annually at the White Pines parking lot. One year, a young, inquisitive Scotty decided he was going to take older brother Sean's car and drive it around the parking lot a bit. What could the harm be done? There was no one around. Well, after a while, Scotty got a little bit more <coughs> courageous and decided to venture around a blind corner when all of a sudden, bang. All I remember is Sean, who was playing goalie at the time, in a full-out sprint towards the accident, wearing full goalie gear, arms raised, yelling at Scott. It was quite the scene. Oh, and I forgot to mention the best part. The car that he had hit coming the other direction was his father coming from home to check in on his boys. <laughs> Scotty was a member of our family. He was a brother to my sister Jen and a second son to my parents Kim and Jeff. He slept many nights on my bedroom floor at my parents' home after we'd spent the night out on the town. When he, moved, when he moved away to join the military, never once in the nine years Scott served did he leave town without making sure to stop by our house. When he, he made sure that we each had an updated military photo with us whenever he went overseas on tour. He even gave my parents a framed picture of himself that included a poem titled The Soldier's Prayer. When he was at war, my parents would hang a yellow ribbon in the front yard and when Scotty arrived home safely, my dad would have Scott cut it down. Scott was supposed to be home next week to cut down this tour's ribbon. Backyard basketball courts, hockey rinks, football fields, golf courses, McDonald's, my parents' basement shooting pool, Scott's parents playing poker. I shared all these amazing experiences with Scotty. The thrills of victories, the agonies of defeat, we sat side by side. Even now, my eyes closed, I can see myself sitting in the corner of a dressing room at the John Rhodes, putting the last strip of tape on my blade and my hockey stick. There's Scotty, beside me, double checking his goalie pad straps, asking me if I can help him put his jersey on. Game time approaching, these were our moments. Over the past couple weeks, there has been a lot of sitting around telling stories, some I've never heard before, 
and others, one in particular, that his fiancée Marcy and his mother had never heard before. I'm referring to Scott dumping his first motorcycle. I'm sorry, Scott, the cat was already out of the bag. You see, Scott never told me that I wasn't supposed to tell his mother this story. Apparently, Scott was out for lunch at a local restaurant. When he left, jumped on his bike, hit the gas, it got away from him, and down he went. So Scott jumped up, looked around to make sure that nobody saw him, threw some broken pieces in his pockets, and took off with no injuries other than to his pride. See, with Scotty, the concern would not have been the damage to the bike, but whether or not somebody would have noticed or whether or not he ripped his new American Eagle shirt or shorts. I'm going to share another story about Scott that his mother, mother hadn't heard either. Scott's probably up cringing at me right now for telling this to her. I'm not of the military background, but I think I have a pretty good idea of how strict things can be in training. Well, one day Scott called me up, all flustered. He had just finished serving a six-hour disciplinary duty where he had to put on a uniform, walk 10 minutes to his superior's office, where his superior would look him over, make sure that he looks proper, <coughs> walk 10 minutes back to his room, change into the next uniform, and report back to the superior. This went on for six hours. So what did he do to get himself in this mess? Well, I guess the day prior, Scott's officer, the superior officer, did a check in his room for dirt. Scott used to tell me that they would take a credit card, run it along the base of the wall, and if there was any dirt, there'd be disciplinary action. Well, that was the first mistake. On the day of Scott's march, the superior, uh, Scott had some downtime with some of the other, uh, the other men when the superior officer came storming in the room and he yelled, whose weapon is this? With a gun in his hand. Well, guess who forgot to lock their weapons locker? If you had the privilege of meeting or getting to know Scott Fernelli, it really was your honor. Few people in this world have the ability to touch as many lives as Scott did. Few people in this world, you know, like Scott, have the ability to come into this world and want to leave the planet a better place than it was when they arrived. And Scott, with his sense of humor, his infectious smile, he brought fun with him wherever he went. And in pursuit of his goal, you know, Scott offered his life to make this place better for others. Because of him, his parents, Chuck, Ruth, his brother, Sean, sister-in-law, Carrie, nephews, Dale, Cole, his fiance, Marcy, daughter, Olivia, his many aunts, uncles, grandparents, cousins, and his many friends should all be extremely proud and even in Scott's passing, Scott is still working hard to make life better for others through donations to the Soldier On Fund. For those of you that aren't familiar with the Soldier On Fund, I want to give you a quick overview. The Soldier On Fund is committed to helping ill and injured Canadian Forces personnel and their loved ones through programs ranging from excellent medical care to vocational assistance to social support and counseling. The Soldier On Program and the complimentary Soldier On Fund provide resources and opportunities for ill or injured personnel or former personnel to attain and maintain healthy and active lifestyles through physical fitness and sport. It is this courage and dedication that distinguishes Scott Bernelli from the rest of us. It's why we are all here today. So Scott, I just want to say thank you for being such a large part of my life. I will carry you in my heart always. You were a loyal and kind brother, a fearless soldier, an accomplished son. You would have been an excellent husband, and by far the most amazing thing is you would have been an amazing, amazing father. Scott, I miss you so much already. So Scott didn't believe in saying goodbyes. He said there was no such thing. Only see you later. So I'll see you later, bud. I love you. And in closing, some may know this, some may not, but Scott was a really, really big Boston Bruins fan. So, in closing, I would like everybody to join me in a Go Bruins, Go chant for Scott Bernalli. Go Bruins, Go! Go Bruins, Go!